Hi, and welcome to the Unity 2020 Product Roadmap. My name is Isaac Roseboom, and I'm a Product Manager here at Unity. At Unity, we want to give developers the tools to build successful games. In order to do that, those games need to be live. Today, we're going to spotlight three products we're building to help game studios achieve this. One of the interesting things we've seen in the last 20 years is a shift away from box products that you can just ship and forget to live games that are continually updating their content to keep people engaged. The benefit of doing this is that you can have a game that lasts a very long time. Clash Clans is a great example of this. It's been around for almost eight years now. But of course, not all live games are doing as well as Clash Clans. Actually, in reality, most live games are losing over 70% of their players in the first day. And this is kind of a sad statistic when you start thinking about all the great content creators out there that are putting their kind of heart and soul into these games only to see players drop off straight away. And so this is the area that we're, or this is the problem that we're trying to fix um, with our live games products. We want to give people the tools so they can understand why players are dropping off and help build better games to keep those players engaged. Before I jump into the products, what I want to talk a little, a little bit is the principles behind their design. So, you know, we think, first of all, we're solving a real customer problem here, right? We know that lots of people are dropping off in these live games and we want to offer products that can help developers keep those players in the games. One thing we've done is collect a lot of feedback from developers of all sizes uh, to try to understand how to solve this problem. And one of the clear things that we've got from those developers is, is that we should make our tools accessible. So whether you build with Unity or not, um, what kind of game you're building, any genre, our tool should work for you. That's one of our core principles. Obviously, the, these tools should improve player engagement. That's that's what we're trying to do here. And then finally, you know, tools should be self-serve. They should be simple. You shouldn't need to do training courses. Um, you shouldn't need to hire specialized staff. These should be things that just work straight out of the box. So onto the first tool we want to talk about today, which is Delta DNA. So Delta DNA was a recent acquisition of Unity back in September 2019. Um, and it has an interesting suite of products that help uh, developers to improve player engagement. But, you know, let's drill down on the problem that Delta New tries to solve. So, you know, as we've talked about, most games really struggle with retention. Over 70% of people are dropping off in the first day. Maybe only a few percent of people are playing after a couple of weeks. Um, and of course, if people aren't playing, they can't be spending. And that, you know, is obviously hurting the, the revenue potential of these games and these businesses. So what Delphine tries to do is, you know, get actionable insights from, from data to help people build better games and retain players and generate more revenue from them. What does that mean in practice? Well, it means analytics, so we can understand what players are up to in the game and improve where players are falling off. It means customer segmentation, so trying to identify which players like your game, um, which players don't like your game, and maybe why, and, and trying to interact with them to, to get better outcomes. Um, A-B testing, obviously, so when you make decisions about um, how to improve your game or what new content you want, you can get it out there in front of players and test it in a safe way uh, among a smaller group of them. And then obviously messaging players, so you know, you've got all this, this information about the players, um, you understand which players like your game and which ones don't, um, and so now you kind of want to interact with them and start to potentially personalize the experience for them with in-game messaging. We talk about this loop of measure, analyze, and engage. So first of all, you're using dashboards and alerts to, to identify problems in the measure part of the toolkit. And then you're digging deep into the data to really understand why you're seeing those trends in the analyze tools. So you know, data mining, forecasting, looking at funnels, that kind of stuff. And then obviously, once you've found the solution, it's not enough to just you know understand it. You really want to act upon it. And that's where the engage tools come in where you see things like A-B testing and, and in-game messaging via targeting that you can then start to try to improve the game to not have um, the problems you're seeing in the data. And we can really see the benefits of this kind of approach in a customer case study we have with Greener Grass recently, where they're able to increase their revenues by 58% using Bell TNA. And what they were really concerned about was how interstitial ads were impacting their IP revenues. And so what they did was they conducted a series of A-B tests to see if um, having a grace period at the start of the game had an impact on um, conversion and retention. So were they able to increase the number of people that were spending by having this grace period where they were not showing any interstitial ads? And interestingly, they, they did. So you know they saw that there was a significant increase in first purchases and revenues. And obviously, what they're able to do is optimize that time um, so they weren't 
also hurting their ad revenue. And you know, by combining those two measures, they're able to increase uh, average revenue per daily active user by 65%. Um, so this is like a really cool that result we've seen with um, with greener, greener grass, um, but it really highlights the benefit of having these kind of tools. Um, so you can do these kind of tests, and you can find, you know, the real answers to how to balance these different parts of the game economy. So just talking a little bit more about the, the plan um, for Delta DNA. So Delta DNA obviously has a, a powerful toolkit already. Um, there's lots of cool stuff you can do in there, like we just talked about. Not only can you do A-B testing, you can also do, you know, deep behavioral analytics, and you can do, um, you know, very fine-grained segmentation and in-game messaging. One of the really cool things we're working on this year is to look at more machine learning. Right now, we're in alpha with a product we're calling Predictive Segments, which allows you to identify players who are likely to do certain actions in the future. So maybe they're very likely to churn from the game. Maybe they're very likely to spend in the game, um, those kind of things, um, which is really cool. So if you're interested in Delta DNA, please visit the website, deltaDNA.com. It's totally uh, free to try for 30 days. And then also you can go to um, our predictive segments page on uni.com and sign up for the alpha for predictive segments. All right, our next product is called GameTune. And GameTune is really interesting because what we're trying to do with GameTune is take sort of best practice data science and machine learning and make it available for every game developer. Um, and so what we know is that right now, you know, maybe some people do A-B testing like we just described. Maybe some people can, can get releases of the game out fast to do experimentation. But in reality, most game companies don't have access to machine learning and data science um, practitioners. And so what we're trying to do is build a best in class data science product that will allow all developers to use um, you know, the, the state of the art data science in their games. Um, and so yeah, you know, GameTune is trying to leverage Unity's machine learning to adjust your game in real time to make sure that you're delivering the best experience for every player. Um, and this is not just the best experience for all players. And so, you know, one of the things that's cool about GameTune is, you know, what what we're not trying to do is find just one really great experience for everybody. Um, and we're not even really trying to segment the players so that, you know, maybe some people get one experience and other people get a different experience. What we're trying to do is build a product where every single player gets the right experience for them, the one that makes them engage most with the game um, and ha hang around the longest, right? Um, and so this is kind of a revolutionary idea that you can build games where um, you can have this level of, of real-time dynamic content delivery um, that that just tries to make it the best experience for that type of player. So how does this work in practice? Um, well, what we're trying to do is optimize for our particular goal. So you know, most of the time that's retention. We want people to just hang around longer. Um, and so in this example, you can see maybe we have three different alternatives for difficulty. So we have easy difficulty, we have medium difficulty, and we have hard difficulty. And what GameTune can do is assign the correct difficulty to the right player. So maybe player one really likes hard games. They've got a lot of experience playing that kind of game. Player two, maybe they've used to play these kind of games and they don't anymore, so they get a medium difficulty. And then again, player three is you know a, a great gamer, so they get the hard difficulty. So everyone gets the difficulty that matches them perfectly and gives them the best experience and, and the best challenge if that's what they want. So a few things we have in development, we're working on our machine learning and in particular, we're rolling out a reinforcement learning model, which we hope will give us a big boost in terms of our um, predictive capabilities. Well, the other thing we're trying to do is roll out templates for the common use cases we're seeing in the beta. So things like ad frequency or the configuration of IAP offers. Um, we want those to be really easy to use and, and really well honed in the in the modeling. And again, looking at the impact of GameTune on real customers, um, we have this case study with Idol Farming Empire from FuturePlay where we were able to see the, the revenue increase of 8% per download. And what they did there, which is really, really cool, was um, to look at the tutorial speed so one of the challenges they had with the game was they weren't sure when they started, you know, when players start out in the game, 
what's the correct speed for the tutorial to run at? Uh, you know, are people who really use these kind of games? Are they not? How do you find a good balance for that? And actually, what what they found is that um, if they had four different speeds, you know, kind of fast, slow, um, extra fast, extra slow, that Game Tune was able to allocate the correct tutorial speed to the correct player. And so therefore, everyone was able to come out of the tutorial with, you know, really good knowledge of the game and they could proceed um, and have a good and successful kind of time with the game. Um, and so, you know, what was really cool is that it instantly impacted the retention. So day three retention was up, day seven retention was up, and naturally that led to an increase in, in revenue. Um, I think this is a really cool use case for Game Tune because it, it's not just about, you know, directly trying to impact something that generates revenue, but it's trying to, you know, impact people's ability to play the game and to enjoy the game. So um, if you want to check out GameTune, go to the website, unity.com slash GameTune. There you can sign up for the GameTune beta. And like I say, you can download the SDK and get going um, with that product. And the last product I want to talk about today is cloud content delivery. And as you can imagine, this is kind of fundamental to the concept of building live games. And you know, it's somewhat disappointing that you know live games have been around for quite a long time now, but there is really no comprehensive and reliable solution for content management delivery. Most live games have got some cobbled together system of third party tools and internal tools, and maybe there's a little bit of Google Sheets baked in there somewhere. And it's just not very scalable and it's not very practical. I know this is a sore point for many developers that we talk to. And so, you know, Unity wants to, to help and solve this problem, right? And so Unity Cloud Content Delivery is engine agnostic, convenient and cost effective way to just have an end to end content management system, one place where all the content management can happen, that's accessible by developers and non technical folk alike, that everyone can see what content is being used um, in which builds of the game and, and where it is in the kind of life cycle. And so, you know, I think that what that means is there's very much more than the CDN, right? Obviously, you know, having all the, the, the components of a CDN, having it being distributed across the, the planet and having being really reliable and, and having, you know, 100% um, uptime is super important, but we're not just trying to, to replicate what other CDNs do. We want to create a workflow and an experience that works for game companies. Um, and what that means is, you know, having a dashboard that can be used by non-technical users, having um, a concept of, of badging that makes sense when you talk about what's in what release so people can see which content is bundled together for a particular release or for a particular game um, and just having a really nice end-to-end -end workflow that makes it more efficient and saves people time you know so so why would you want to use this a lot of things i just talked about right you can it's a faster time to market because you don't have to worry about building your own toolkit and the maintenance of that and trying to onboard people to that you know it's convenient works for everyone it should be intuitive um, obviously, if it's a CDN, it has to be reliable, has to have 100% uptime. Um, it should be cost effective. And obviously, you know, one of the nice things about having it in one place is that you don't have this fragmented cost you can't track. And then, like I said a few times, you know, it's empowering. It allows everybody in a, in a games company to be part of the content delivery um, pipeline. So, you know, here are the kind of key features. I'm not going to go through all of them one by one. As I've said a lot, um, the idea here is to unlock the workflow to, to non-technical people. Um, so what that means is, you know, the ability to have very fine-grained permission control and group content together in, in buckets that everyone can see, you know, have very fine-grained control over the revisioning system and release numbering so everyone knows what's going into what release. Um, you know, having a very quick deployment mechanism so you don't have to send three emails to get something deployed. You know, having a, what we're calling a badging system so that you can attach specific content to a specific release in a consistent and um, and so sort of foolproof way. Um, and then obviously having a dashboard that, you know, can be accessed by non-technical folk, but also having that work via API so that the, the more um, development focused folk can can script it and make it, make it work programmatically. You know, the other need that we're trying to focus on here is that it will already work with existing Unity projects and doesn't require any more integration. One of the things we're doing for people that build with Unity is obviously we're directly integrating this into the addressable system so that, you know, you can just have a, a really easy to, to manage end-to-end -end, um, runtime content management system if you're developing with Unity. Um, and then obviously we'll build in 
you know, integrations with the other Unity service like Unity Cloud Build. Um, and then, you know, it's still a CDN. It has to have low latency. Um, it has to have um, fast response times. And we're doing that um, through a partnership with the global CDN leader, Akamai. So the plan for the cloud content delivery is that it will be GA um, quite soon, so middle of Q2. Um, and then it's going to be fully featured at that point. There's no phase rollout. It's just going to work out of the box. Um, we're also pushing for some advanced features like differential patching and um, you know spatial data queries that, that will help uh, make it more powerful. So content delivery is uh, available now. Jump again on the website, uni.com slash ccd sign up, and you can sign up there for um, the pilot program, which is kicking off now. So just to summarize, you know, across live games, what we're really trying to do is give people deep analytics and CRM, really easy content management and delivery, and giving people the power to use machine learning in their games easily without having to have lots of data science expertise. Any of the things I've talked about, you can access them here. So DeltaNA, go to DeltaNA.com. Um, if you want to learn more about our predictive segments product, go to unity.com slash predictive segments. For GameTune, unity.com slash GameTune. And obviously for cloud content delivery, go to unity.com slash CCD sign up. One last thing, we're holding a Q&A with our product teams over on the Unity forum. To join in, click the link in the description below. Product experts will be dedicated to answering all your roadmap questions from now until Friday, so jump over there if you get the chance.